Hello, my name is Michael Garrick, and this is Popping Culture Movie Reviews. My guest today is comedian Matt Pennington. Uh, we're going to be reviewing the movie Fight Club. Matt chose the movie. Um, before we get into it, this will be 100% spoiler review. But before we spoil the movie, Matt, do you believe they should watch it? Yeah, for sure. If you haven't seen Fight Club, you're missing out. And if you don't understand Fight Club... I don't really know what to tell you. Um, look up some internet explanations. But <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot and there's a lot to miss for sure. Um that's what do you ever uh, do you ever follow any like uh cinema Instagram accounts? Yeah. There's so there's so many little things that you don't notice in movies that they point out. So follow stuff like history of cinema and whatnot on Instagram and I mean, it might spoil a couple movies you haven't seen, but it'll explain things in really good movies that you should have seen. Yeah. And I agree with Matt completely. Uh, I believe you guys should watch it. All right, guys, from this point on, it's 100% spoilers. Um, so, Matt, I'll let you kick it off, man. I can never hear that song, Where Is My Mind, without <laughs> thinking of that scene with the building crashing down. And... Also, there's a DJ that did a remix of it. So then I was at his show, and it was the first song he played. And I was like, this is really fitting. A bunch of fucking hippies standing around. And that song is making me think about a credit card building falling. I was like, somehow this just meshes. <laughs> but, um, he knows his audience, too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. And a lot of people, I bet a lot of them have seen it, and it doesn't exactly click like that for them. I love soundtracks and movies, too. Me, though. too. Because I think that the music that you use for a movie is what really sets it off. Yes. Because like you could have, if a movie like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood had shitty music, it would probably be so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like I started listening to Vanilla Fudge because of that movie. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But you know that's 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 Quentin Tarantino for you. He's gonna have a good soundtrack and a few feet. Um, yeah. In the movie. Yeah. Uh, but uh, get back to Fight Club. Um, yeah. The first time you viewed it, did you kind of know before the twist happened, or did you, or were you like fully? I like, was fully blown. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I, I would like to say that like it was it was just weird. I I had seen complicated movies before. Like I saw I'd seen Pulp Fiction. Not that that's the most complicated movie ever. I'd seen Pulp Fiction a couple times before. So just because I watched those out of order, I guess I don't know. Um but I knew that, like, it was all in the shooting and whatnot, like, and they're just, like, w when uh, Tyler's in there fucking, what's her name in the movie? What's the I, girl's name? I forgot her name just now. Just now when you act, sorry. Doesn't matter. Great job. Um, when he's in there fucking her and then Edward Norton is just chilling in his room, it's like, how do you, when you first watch that, there's no way to know almost, but then the way that it's shot up cut up you see that they're never actually in the room together at the same time talking to her and that definitely gets kind of weird but i was completely blown away the first time i saw it yeah me me too it was the twist for me the first time i remember watching i just remember that twist being like because i'm big into like no i mean i was but then i thought about it i was like no that's perfect nothing there's no um loophole where it's like no nah, that can't make sense because of xyz it was like no yeah. that was perfectly circled and you get so caught up in the original, like the thesis of why he created Tyler in his head, which was like abandoning your materials, and you see them out there just like living off the lamb, shooting golf balls into industrial parks and shit with no water, just doing whatever they want. You get so in it, the movie invests you so much into that and how crazy Tyler is ramping things up. Um, that you completely lose sight of the fact that he could be having like a fucking mental split. Yep. <laughs> It's like the, it doesn't even cross your mind the first time. I will say I don't exactly understand how he shot himself and didn't kill himself. But whatever. I mean, it's a movie. They get a, They they did so well on the parallels and the plot that like he he get a pass on shit yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> it is still a movie. Yeah, I forgot the reason why, but I it slipped my mind just now. Um, I mean, was ah. Yeah, they, they they did like explain why though. I can't remember now. Yeah, and it was I guess it was like the right angle or yeah, something. Yeah, like, it was Brad definitely. Pitt's just got a better jawline, so he just shot that part out. Yeah, it was definitely uh, BS excuse, but it was yeah. like I've heard of people doing that in real life, so I was like, I don't know. Yeah. If I if I flew this far with this movie, I might as well keep flying. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. that's the only way that you like do it at that point. Yeah. Like, 
Because what is he going to do? Stab himself yeah. and then just die. And then it's like, eh, that's really morbid. <laughs> like, yeah. um, when it comes to performances, um, people love giving Brad Pitt a lot of credit. But I really think the best performance would have to be Edward Norton. Yeah, like, for sure. The first time you see the movie, Brad Pitt captivates you a lot more. But then when you realize like who Edward Norton played in the development that he went through in his character, so much more radical than Brad Pitt, who's the same throughout the whole entire movie. It's fuck this, smoke a cigarette, fuck that girl, and just like, who gives a shit? Like, we're not, we're cutting our fingernails for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just, and I guess I might be just, because it's bias, of course, but I, I, I just, a lot of people give credit to actors that, oh, he yelled during the movie, so that means he gave a great performance. It's like, he gave a great performance, but like, let's not skip out these people that didn't yell too. Yeah, like, um, even uh, the fat guy. Yeah, like supporting actor, like he did a great job at <laughs> playing his role. Like, and then when he died, that's what I thought. It was kind of funny. Um, not kind of funny, but uh, it almost parallels the times a little bit because like they just started chanting his name, and I was like, this. And I was watching it over the quarantine. I was like, this sounds oddly familiar with what's going on yes. in the streets right now. Yes. But then it, everybody kind of has their phrases like stop the steal is like the Republicans one. I mean, I wouldn't really say that that much was stolen. But um, I don't know. Not to dive into that. We're talking about the movie. Uh, when was the first time? What did you think the first time you saw it? I was like, this is... This is stupid. This is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, now this is a great twist. Now this movie becomes great. Now yeah. I see why people enjoy it. Yeah. But I honestly, the whole time I watched it, I'm just like, mm, did people really get this far in real life? Did <laughs> this kind of situation? But once I saw a twist, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Because I, I was like, okay, this now. It was funny. Like I just, I mean, I enjoyed it, but it was more like, uh, this, this isn't. Everybody told me that like, this is a master class in film, and I was just, like, I didn't see it till the end. Yeah. And then when yeah. I rewatched it, I was like, okay, this was. And you see, like, the cigarette burns yeah. up in the corner every time Tyler does something weird and whatnot. Dude, how many people do you think in LA are going through their Edward Norton Fight Club moment right now? Uh, it's scary to say, man. <laughs> because they think that there's. <laughs> Never mind. This is a bad homeless count joke. <laughs> but. It's so sad, man. Yeah. Um, to talk about the pacing, I felt like it was paced well. Like, it never For felt sure. like a moment where I was like, they need to cut this part out of the movie. Yeah, even the parts where it was, like, slow. Like, when they were walking around the house and they go down into the basement and there's water all in it. They could have just, like, looked at the water. Yeah, those little things where it was slow and then the rest of the movie was super fast. They're fighting. Guys are getting knocked out, like... It's an, that's what makes some action movies really annoying. The plot is so just like sugar coated bullshit, and then it's just a bunch of action scenes. And like that's fine, that's fun, that's great for like kids and people that are just trying to relax and watch it. But like that's not that's not like a film to me. Not to sound like a critiquing asshole, but like because there's different films for everyone. It's a reason why nobody rewatch Hardcore Henry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God you know what that is. <laughs> That's a hard movie to explain to people. Yeah. Like, have you played Halo? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I played a lot of Halo at one point. Yeah. Me too. Uh, first started with Killzone and got to, um, to stay back at the Fight Club. Besides the movie, how many times have you heard people quote that line? Oh, never talk about Fight Club? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Probably like 2,000 times before I saw the movie. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> with my age, just because like, when did it come out? Like early 2000s or yeah. something? Um, I think it might have been late, or late 90s, but yeah. Yeah, like 99 or something yeah. like that. Um, but I was two in 99. I didn't see that movie, but I had heard my brothers and whatnot talk about it all the time. Like, da 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 Fight Club. Um Never talk about Fight Club. And I'm like, what's that movie? And they're like, do not watch it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bad movie for a five-year-old to be like, whoa, this is an influence. <laughs> yeah, if I heard a five-year-old quote Fight Club, I'd be like, oh, man. Yeah. Times are changing. Uh, Netflix has messed up everybody. You uh, selling soap? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll give it to them. They had great fight choreography. Cause, yeah. Because they never looked like they knew how to fight. And I enjoyed it. Like, they looked like guys that just like... 
I'm tired. I'm tired of working. I'm tired of this. It's never. It's never a moment where you saw somebody who's like he knows what he's doing. It's just like I'm mad and I need to yeah. take frustration out. Yeah, it's funny. Old school is like the same thing as that almost. Yeah. Like I imagine that like the way that <laughs> when Edward Norton goes on that rant, I could walk through this office with a loaded M16 and blast every single one of you. And he's got like blood on his shirt still, but he's like doing his job well. That's how it was in old school when he was like running the fraternity super well. That was a very dark turn that Edward Norton took with it to just be like completely apathetic. But um, it's kind of like stand up in the way that when you find a hobby that you really care about outside of work, your work rate increases because you don't put as much. Some people um, you don't put as much emphasis on like, oh, this is the only thing I do that matters. Yeah. Like when you have something that you love outside of it, then work is just rinse, lather, the repeat type of thing. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like um. Uh, I don't know what you do, but for my job, it's just like, it's never a moment where I'm working where I'm like, this is where I'm going to end up forever. Yeah, I work for a mortgage company and I'm in it for the long haul. Like, like it's, it's just it's just never a moment where I'm just like, this is this is it. Like, this is all I want to do. Like, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, I want to be a comic. That's yeah. why I, with the credits, I like, I love movies. We're talking about one, but I wasn't going to say that I'm going to be an actor. No. Like, I do have movie ideas and like skit ideas and whatnot but i don't know i never want to get to the point where like where actors they have to be like yo i need my next movie i would rather be like well i'm gonna go open for so and so i'm gonna feature for so and so yeah. and then hopefully if i can get to that title i'm going to just headline so and so and then like yeah shit dude i don't even want to go to work i heard dave Chappelle's doing two hours tonight let me just go sit in the back and watch <laughs> like i'd rather do that than be like oh i got a call sheet time at five in the morning like eh, fuck your film i'm yeah. saying 10 lines like yeah. in the throughout well, the whole day of shooting <laughs> yeah well oh this is gonna be a classic really okay yeah all right yeah um, this Tyler Perry movie? Uh, just joking, <laughs> just joking. Just joking, just joking. Is Harvey Weinstein producing? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Nah, he just, he, dude, he produced a lot of good movies. Terrible person, but it's like my, my the buddy. The people that worked for him knew what they were doing. Yeah, that's one of those things where it's like, how do you not know what the fuck's going on? And I mean, a lot of people did, but I guess he just paid really fucking good to keep people quiet for that long. It's probably well documented too, <laughs> but was it any um, time in the movie where you were just like um, dove in? Like, when was the moment where you was like, "Okay, I'm, this movie has me interested"? When uh, when his apartment blew up, yeah, for sure, because it's like, oh fuck, now he has nothing, and then he ends up in that bar, and then him and Tyler fight each other outside. Which is just like, and they're sitting there drinking a beer and you see this moment of camaraderie and you're like, oh, fuck, these dudes are about to be riding for the whole movie. It's like, I don't know, every movie has that little catalyst point. What was it for you? Uh, for me, it was the same part. Because yeah. once Tyler introduced, gets introduced to the movie, the movie turns, go, like the pacing, just like everything turns. Oh, yeah, because before that, when he's like going to all the different meetings and shit, it's like cancer survivor mm -hmm. meetings and whatnot. It's like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is like some shitty, depressing remix of The Matrix where the guy's just stuck in it. <laughs> I clearly remember, because uh, at that time we had direct TV, I was still at my mom's house. This is like years and years ago. I think it was like, either 13 or 14 but i just remember like i went back on a little tv guide option i was hey am i watching the right movie like i was looking at the synopsis like i don't think this is the end. this doesn't sound like anybody's about to be bare knuckle brawling yeah, no, <laughs> um but the scenes where you, you see him not fighting someone i think they they directed those very well of them yeah just, like, and i was like that Luckily, um, I've talked to a lot of people with mental health, and that's not how it is at all. Thank God. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would hate to be pulling up to a Waffle House and see somebody going like this. Like, oh, <laughs> I don't need an all-star special from here. Uh, Break into this Waffle House. Yeah. <laughs> like, no one needs that. Yeah, so when it comes to like the way they classify mental illness, the movie is not good on that, on that path. But besides that, um, it's good. Did you find any like messages in the movie? Um. Yeah, definitely the, uh, like, and there's definitely a big fuck capitalism vibe in it, but more Hard. so really, 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 really big fuck capitalism vibe. And coming out of the late 90s, too, after, like, Clinton balanced the sheets and whatnot, we were killing it with the economy, and they're like, nah, this is fucking bad. Um, 
but it was really what the capitalism thing that they harped on to was like the materialism aspect. Like he was just like buying furniture at the start. I was almost invested from that part. Cause like coming from like a very stereotypical middle-class family, like blah, 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 go to college, get your degree, have your job, do all that stuff. It's just like, you see a lot of people do, I've seen a lot of people do exactly what he was describing now that I've gotten a little bit older. And it's just like, what are you buying shit for? And that just really resonated with me because like how much happier he was once his apartment blew up and he was living in a piece of shit house, like with not with nothing like that to me, I don't know. That just hit me really hard because it was like, you don't need shit to be happy as long as you're happy. Yeah. I mean, he was also hallucinating someone. So, but that's a different aspect of it, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know the materialism aspect, which is just like, uh, sub part of capitalism is materialism because that's how capitalism runs. Like yeah. every Amazon package is capitalism. Of course. But you know, tweet fuck capitalism and then order something off Amazon. K- keep it going. <laughs> the sad way that works. <laughs> You're right. I don't know. It's just that that shit gets me. <laughs> but because I, I it, it you know it goes in we really do talk off topic, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. It is what it is. It makes it a better podcast. Yeah. It has happened to me where I want to say fuck capitalism, but then I'll get some home, like homemade, um, like Papa shop pizza. And I'm like, this pizza is fucking horrible. Yeah. And I'll be like, I'll go to pizza and this is like this big brand, you know, big for not yeah. the little man. But I'm like, look, if the little man doesn't care about the way he makes this pizza and I'm getting this like always good pizza. Yeah. And then those spots where, and yes, the times have greatly affected restaurants, but like spots that have been there for a while stay there because they make money, yes. because they care about their shit, because they're really good. And that's why you go to those local yes. spots that are just like fire. Like if, if you, a good, if you, if you want to like ball out in a city, ask your poor friend where they want to go, where they would go if they had unlimited money. Cause that's probably the best restaurant in the city. Make, make sure you word that totally different when you ask them. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say poor, but like, you know what I mean? You know, one buddy that's just like knows how to ball, but the, isn't in the financial situation. That's been me most of my life. So like <laughs> I knew where to go, but, um, I'm pretty, the way I would word it, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Go no, ahead, you're bro. good. No, I, I'm sorry, bro. But the way I would word it, just like, hey, where's the nice, nice place? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah nice. exactly. Don't say the place he can't afford, but like the place he can't afford. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I've been digging for. <laughs> like, where would you go if you had like a hard 10 yeah. <laughs> and I was fronting the bill? Yeah. <laughs> um. If you had enough disposable income, but, yeah. yeah. Uh, could you see anybody else playing the Brad Pitt part? Hmm. Random wild thought, Steve McQueen. I don't know why. Yeah. It's just the first name that popped into my head. But uh, Keanu Reeves could have done it, but I think that it was too close off. The, like it was too close to the time in the Matrix. It would have just like felt like. Very that, similar. And that, him and Edward Norton look too much alike. Yeah, that and I think he was still coming. He was just off of like speed too. Which yeah. I don't know, Matrix was a totally different movie, so it didn't yeah. matter. Uh don't quote me on this, because it totally could be an off this could totally be like clickbait. But I did read that uh Jason David Frank was supposed to be the if you really? don't know Jay oh you know who that is, cool. Um I don't, but who Jay- is that? Jay- <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm. Well, how old are you? I'm 24. Okay, I'm. Oh, I'm. Tw- I'm about to be 29 on 18. Okay, work. but um, uh, Jason David Frank is the guy that played the Green Ranger. Okay, all right. What's the Green Ranger? Uh, <laughs> I did that purposely. <laughs> I was like, I don't fucking know what this is. Uh, in the in the middle of the 90s, there was a show called Power okay. Rangers, and um oh. The yeah. Power Rangers. And it was like a Green Ranger. I know the Power. He, All right. I get you. I get you. I get you. I get you. For some reason, I thought it was a show called The Green Ranger. And I was like. Oh, no. Not Western. But like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You thought it was a Western. No. Uh, it was a Green Ranger. Then he became a White Ranger. But yeah. Apparently. What did Cheech play a cowboy? <laughs> uh, um, apparently, he was up for the yeah. role, too. Okay. Shit. Yeah. I don't know. There's not many. 
Brad Pitt's one of those guys where he inserts himself into a role so much that like he they can't really see exactly. someone else playing his roles. Like, you know, like even Leo would be weird there. I'm not, not going to slide him past though. I yeah, think. no, he could do it. Yeah, I'm not going to sure. slide him, but yeah, um, it, would, it, it would be like he. I can't. It's like Tom Brady. It's just like ah, oh, he shouldn't, but maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I've always wanted to see is The Departed flip flopped with Matt Damon playing the good cop and Leonardo DiCaprio playing the dirty cop. I think that that's why the movie works because Leo yeah, was about to say, looks yeah. like the dirty cop and Matt looks like the. Yep. That's why it works. But like, whenever I watch that movie, I'm like, I just want to watch Leo say "fuck you." <laughs> it would just be cooler, but. I don't know. They should never do that realistically. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was like, just, I was like, just keep it. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I don't, the last thing we need is more remakes and sequels of perfectly fucking good movies. Like if anybody ever makes a remake of the deer hunter, fucking, ugh. I just hope they never make a remake of Pulp Fiction. I've read about it, but I just hope they don't do it. I uh, dude, if they do, that's ridiculous. What? Yeah. Don't touch it, man. How? Don't touch it. What do you? What? What do you do? Don't touch it. <laughs> like, don't touch it. Anybody that tries to remake a Tarantino film will crash and burn. Yes. Like, you're not him. Yeah, maybe he stole all of his camera angles. Some people say that, and like, not the craziest accusation ever. Sometimes. If you look at the side by sides, but like, dude, what else is? It's film. Yeah. Like, if you if something looks good, it looks good. Yeah. If it like sports, if you make a basket, you make a basket. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter how you do it. Yeah. Um. But I will say, with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, there was so many similarities to the start of Wolf of Wall Street, but just with Leo as a different character. So like. Uh, in Wolf of Wall Street with Matthew McConaughey's breaking shit down to him, the classic fucking fairy dust scene. Um, that's the same thing as when Al Pacino breaks shit down to Leo in the start of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. It's the same scene. And then a couple parallels, but like that one specifically is just like, see, but then he only does one little thing like that and then completely breaks away from it for the rest of the movie. Like, it's good storytelling. Yeah. Just like in uh, Fight Club. It's just, it's, it's not, it's just, it's just good storytelling. Mm-hmm. Even though it's very confusing, when you see the twist and you look back, it's like, all oh, this needs to be here for it to yeah. make sense. Um, one through ten, what would you give Fight Club? Probably like a eight, eight. I agree. I give it a solid nine. Yeah. Just like out of, because like a ten for me is like Apocalypse Now or like. Maybe even like Goodfellas or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like shit like that though. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not that Fight Club isn't that, but it's not that. Yeah. This is a, this is gonna be a dumb question, but I ask just because I feel like I have to ask and like I let my guests choose the movies. But uh, do you believe this movie is a part of pop culture? <laughs> I do heavily. Okay. With I, how many times you like you asked how many times have you heard it referenced? Yeah. How many shirts you've seen? Even that horrible video game. Like it's just it's, yeah. it's almost everywhere. Like people really, really fell in love with this movie. Yeah. I hope nobody started fight clubs because of this movie. Because those injuries in the movie would be twice as worse in real life. Dude, yeah, you break your hand nine times out of ten punching. Yes. Like if you yes. were in like a fight, fight the way that they were fighting. Yeah, it's way you, you, you should slap, not punch. Yeah. Yeah. I saw someone do that once. This guy was like barking at his buddy and this dude fucking walked up behind him and just slapped him yeah. in the head and knocked him out with a slap. Yep. If you hit jaw or ear, they'll knock him out. But if you this, you'll just break it. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Fighting's wild. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything you'd like to say to your fans? Um, follow me on Instagram, Matt Penning 10, M A T T P E N N I N G. 10 um vegans shouldn't play call of duty because of the murder involved <laughs> no we ended it like that we're, we're gonna end it like that yeah, I know. we're gonna end it like that i was like let me say something else no that's the, that's the way it's gonna end that's the way it's gonna end uh thank you so much man for coming for on sure, to the podcast dude. anytime you want to come back just let me know will do man all right thank, thank you, you for having me no problem thank you guys for listening and have an amazing day